Well, any astronomer was uh, very interested in this object, including me, because this was the first time we had uh, confirmed that an object was coming in from outside of our own solar system. This is the first thing we ever saw that was not part of our solar system. There were a few things about Oumuamua that were you know, the specific object that were unexpected and unusual. So initially people thought that it was this very long, like cigar-shaped object. So when we saw it, um, people initially thought that it was an asteroid because it didn't have a tail. It was just a, a point of light. You know, comets have these big, beautiful tails because they are evaporating lots of gases like water and carbon dioxide. If we could figure out what unusual circumstances or, or what circumstances at the beginning of our solar system might have created an object just like Oumuamua and give it a natural explanation. When we had more observations, um, we found that there was this small rocket effect like you get for a comet, which was then, okay, how do you match the fact that it has this comet-like rocket effect, but you didn't see the comet tail? And we settled on the composition of nitrogen ice, frozen ice. And this was very attractive from the very beginning because this is an ice that we do see in our own solar system on the surface of Pluto. So it was, uh, we reasoned it was possible that there could have been Plutos and other solar systems with nitrogen ice on their surfaces and a piece of it knocked off could have entered our solar system and explained everything we saw. And so then we went through the calculations and the reflectiveness that you need to exactly reproduce the rocket effect that we observed is the reflectiveness of the surface of Pluto, which has a lot of nitrogen ice on the surface. So that was like, you know, we hadn't necessarily been expecting that and it just fell out and I was like, okay, that's amazing. That's great. Since this fits everything we know about it, it seems reasonable to conclude it is a piece of another planet and it's a planet like Pluto. That's exciting to have a, a piece like that in our, in our own backyard. And more than that, it tells us that the things that happened in our own solar system, uh, where you had Pluto's forming and, and banging into other icy objects and, and fragments flying off, all of these things we learned that that probably did happen in our solar system as a result of this research and it tells us this is probably a near universal process and that other solar systems are doing the same thing that our solar system did. In the process of doing that, just like if you have a bar of soap and you're using it in the shower, once you've been using it for a long time, you might start off with a fairly chunky bar, but you end up with this annoying little sliver. And exactly the same kind of thing happens, that if you're just removing layers of material off the surface, then it slowly makes that flattening more extreme. And so that very naturally also explains um, why it was so flat when we observed it. It wasn't that flat when it came into the solar system. It's just that during the course of going through the solar system, it lost something like 95% of its mass because it went closer to the sun than Mercury. And that evaporated so much material that we were just left with the little soap sliver by the time we actually saw it.